You know who I hate? Doctors. Whether it's delivering babies or healing loved ones or being a friendly ear that you can rely on. Thank God the FDA are pushing for a new bill whereby they'll be able to prevent doctors prescribing what they want. I wonder if that will lead to more profits for Big Pharma because they've had a tough couple of years. Hello there, you six million awakening wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage towards truth and freedom. Believe it or not, we are winning. The establishment is faltering. The truth is beginning to illuminate the dark corners of their shadowy world. And together, we will be victorious as long as we focus on individual awakening, overcoming cultural war, and uniting against our common elite enemies. Not that I'm endorsing hate in any way towards anyone, just systemic biases that lead to ignorance and corruption. Turn on that notification bell right now. We may content every day and I want you to see all of it. It's very important that we stay on the same page together. Otherwise, fantastic stories like this one will escape your attention. The FDA are pushing for a new bill which will prohibit your family doctor, if you're lucky enough to still have one, prescribing what they think's best for you in case it's at odds what benefits the profiteering big pharmaceutical industry. Let's see how they're going to pull this one off, those geniuses. All of this seems a bit strange when Joe Biden claims we beat Big Pharma this year. We beat Farmer this year! How did you beat Big Farmer this year? What kind of victory is it where they're profiting more than ever? A little noticed provision of the omnibus spending bill could give the FDA power to ban off label use of approved therapies. Secreted within the 2023 omnibus appropriations bill, 4,155 pages, oh god, how boring, spending $1.7 trillion that includes a record $858 billion in military spending, oh god, oh, so, so boring, I can't even focus on the corruption, the numbers are so big, is a 19-line section that could change the way medicine is practised. What I like when a seismic piece of legislation is being passed is to find it secreted in a little noticed piece of bureaucracy. Literally, this will mean that your doctor will not be able to do what's best for you because they'll work for Big Pharma now. And it's not like we saw during the opioid crisis the terrible negative effects of Big Pharma's influence on physicians, is it? No, I'm I'm being sarcastic, that is what happened. Physicians routinely prescribe drugs and employ medical devices that are approved and labelled by the Food and Drug Administration for a particular use, yet sometimes physicians discern other beneficial uses for these technologies, which they prescribe for their patients without specific official sanction. The new legislation amends the Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act, or FDCA, to give the FDA the authority to ban some of these off-label uses of otherwise approved products. This unwarranted intrusion into the physician patient relationship threatens to undermine medical innovation and patient care. The new provision was enacted at the FDA's urging in response to a decision by the US Circuit Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia. The case, Judge Rotenberg Education Center versus FDA, involved a 2020 final rule in which the FDA banned the use of an electrical stimulation device only in the treatment of self-injurious behaviors such as headbanging and self-biting. I was misusing that device. The court held that the FDA had the power to ban a medical device altogether under Section 360F of the FDCA if it poses an unreasonable and substantial risk of illness or injury. But barring a practitioner from prescribing or using an otherwise approved device for a specific off-label indication would violate another FDCA section which bars the FDA from regulating the practice of medicine. So what they're looking for is a crafty, sly, insidious way to be able to intercede in your relationship with your physician. And as usual, it's for your safety and for your benefit. Oh my God, people are going to use this stimulating device for all sorts of ways. And I suppose if we introduce new regulation, we'd be able to insist that you use our preferred medication however we wanted. Therefore, Big Pharma, who pay for the FDA, by the way, in a significant portion, will be able to tell their shareholders that we're likely to get this amount of profit over the next quarter because we're controlling what doctors are prescribing to their patients. But that's just a side bit. Benefit. Your safety first, eh? The omnibus bill amends section 360F to allow a finding that a device can pose an unreasonable risk for one or more intended uses and ban those uses while leaving it approved for other uses. Since the new provisions lets the FDA skirt the ban on interfering with the practice of medicine by banning devices for particular uses, the agency will likely claim this is a precedent, allowing it to ban off-label uses of drugs as well. Are you saying that the FDA may not be transparent and clear and keep patient care at the heart of all its policies? putting pharmaceutical profits ahead of the well-being of ordinary people. Don't be so disgusting.
fantastic. This is a problem for many reasons. The statute gives the FDA the power without any public input to prevent patients' access to off-label therapies even though their physicians and their patients have found the treatments to be beneficial or even essential. Why would you want Big Pharma and a regulatory body that they fund interfering in your relationship with your doctor about your health? Have they not found enough ways to extract revenue from you, to put your health second, to put your well-being way, way behind their profits in their list of priorities? Why is the bias moving even further in that direction while the President of America claims that Big Pharma has been beaten this year? Let me know in the chat, let me know in the comments. Yet, one in five prescriptions written are for an off-label use. This indicates a degree of freedom that physicians currently have that will be foreclosed. And also, it just shows this is a licensing law. This is not about medicine. This is about licensing. This is about profits, patents, the ability to extract revenue. It's not about, oh God, what can we do to help people that have got cancer and diabetes and they're addicted to opioids? Well, we did addict them to see opioids. I know, but surely there's a profitable way to get them off them. No, there isn't. I'm afraid they're all dead. Oh, well, should we start selling coffins? In some fields, off-label use is the rule, not the exception. In oncology, the standard treatment for specific types or stages of cancer often includes the off-label use of one or more drugs. And off-label uses are routine in pediatrics where scientific, ethical and logistical concerns preclude conducting large trials for approval in children. Because a lot of people don't want clinical trials done on their children. Allowing the FDA to ban certain off-label uses will impair clinical progress. Off-label use enables physicians to assess their patients' unique circumstances and use their own evolving scientific knowledge in deciding to try approval products for new indications. Substituting regulators' wisdom for the cost-benefit judgment of physicians and their patients will discourage attempts to use approved products in new and beneficial ways and deprive patients of valuable treatment. But who cares about that? The FDA has moved from an entirely taxpayer-funded entity to one increasingly funded by user fees paid by manufacturers that are being regulated. The pharmaceutical industry funding alone has become so dominant that last year it counted for three quarters or 1.1 billion of the agency's drug division budget. And obviously that's going to impact the type of medications that are approved, the type of therapies that come to the forefront. And now with this new piece of legislation, the inability for your physician to prescribe to you what they think is best for your health. So, you know Joe Biden's infrastructure bill that Congress passed last year? Of course you do. You're well informed. You watch our channel. Well, here's something I bet you didn't know about it. In a few years, every car might be required to come with a safety device that passively monitors you for impaired driving. I don't know about you, but I don't think the government needs to know what's happening in my car at all times. Why is it their business? Big government wants to control every part of your life and clamp down on your digital freedom. Did you know your internet provider can keeps logs of your internet activity. When you use ExpressVPN, your internet activity is shielded. Unlike the kill switch the government wants to put in all of our cars, ExpressVPN's kill switch actually protects you. If your VPN connection ever drops, network data is immediately stopped from entering or leaving your device to keep your privacy from being compromised. And all it takes is one easy tap of a button for ExpressVPN to secure all your devices. I've arranged three months extra free if you use my special code. That's EXPRESSVPN.com slash brand to get this special offer for you. Outrage of this nature first came to our attention when last year California Governor Gavin Newsom sought to intercede in what your doctor could tell you regarding your old friend, coronavirus. California lawmakers are looking to tackle medical misinformation head on. The state legislature approved a bill that could punish doctors for spreading false claims about COVID-19. It's interesting to watch the creep from misinformation and disinformation being the domain of conspiracy theorists to the domain of doctors and physicians. It's very easy easy to begin popularizing the term misinformation and disinformation when the image you have of the purveyors of this type of data is outlaws on the internet coming up with unsubstantiated theories. But when it's like your doctor who you know and have a relationship with, if you have that privilege in this increasingly scarce medical environment, is a more difficult sell to position your doctor as the enemy suggests that now the argument has become somewhat untenable. Do you remember that we used to be invited to prize a 
and cherish doctors and nurses and care workers as devoted people dedicated to helping you and serving you. But now that their advice and recommendations and medical expertise might be at odds with the pursuit of profit and the will and agenda of pharmaceutical giants, they have to be recast as villains and conspiracy theorists. So misinformation is actually the spread of uh, information that goes against what scientific data tells us. But of course when they say scientific data they mean approved scientific data and scientific data is more likely to have been approved if it leads to profit. And we can see now how legislation is creating the conditions for only certain pieces of information to be prized. That's why in an age where all of us have access to information in new ways they have to create terms like misinformation and disinformation and pretend that there's such a thing as objective science that's simple and devoid of conflict. What we're seeing over the course of the pandemic is new narratives that were suspected early on becoming more and more popularized because there were experts at the very beginning that said, whoa, 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 this type of vaccine could be complicated. But what was happening during that environment? Lobbying, corporate interests, all those things rose to the forefront because of established relationships and patterns, because of the revolving doors, because of the conflicts of interest and more importantly, the convergence of interest. Now what they're trying to do is instantiate in law endless profiteering and trying to create conditions where dissent and opposing voices are automatically nullified. And that's important because this could affect the medical licenses of these health individuals if they are caught spreading that misinformation and being proponents of that disinformation. And that's where the law really comes down on health officials. Get that law coming down on those health officials. That's what the law's there for, isn't it? Right now you've seen, of course, like Twitter discourse and other social media discourse where these health officials or experts you know, are able to freely tout their opinion or speak about what the information they feel uh it is the best. Can't have experts touting their opinions just because they've dedicated their lives to learning what that opinion is formed on. Do you remember it used to be like the war against drugs and the war against terror? Now it's the war against doctors and experts. Who are we going to have wars against now? Everyone! And so this really would help put an end to that, especially if we're going into an uh, an era of more focus on, uh, you know, public health uh, outbreaks and messaging. AB 2098, signed into law by California Governor Gavin Newsom qualifies spreading COVID-19 misinformation as unprofessional conduct and makes it punishable as such. It declares that physicians and surgeons who disseminate or promote misinformation or disinformation related to COVID-19, including false or misleading information regarding the nature and risks of the virus, its prevention and treatment, and the development, safety, and effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccines, should be subject to disciplinary action, which could result in the loss of the doctor's medical license. Looking at some of the tests that the CDC are now undertaking for themselves, Looking at some of the information that's available from Pfizer and Moderna's own clinical trials, it seems that these physicians who were being prevented from advising their patients according to their conscience and their own understanding were in fact in the right, at odds with this legislation. Do you imagine that this new FDA-backed legislation might take us to a similar place where centralised corporate power yield the stick over genuine expertise and real-life experience? Doctors, fearing loss of their livelihoods, will need to hew closely to the government line on covid science and policy, even if that line does not track scientific evidence. If the evidence contradicts the required outcome of the pharmaceutical corporate elite, then they will simply punish physicians financially for going with their own consciences. After all, until recently, top government science bureaucrats like Dr. Fauci claimed that the idea that COVID came from a Wuhan laboratory was a conspiracy theory rather than a valid hypothesis that should be open to discussion. A loss of license would be career ending for doctors who spend their lives caring for patients, but since examples cited in the bill are themselves misleading, even physicians who practice medicine responsibly or give public presentations grounded in solid scientific research on the evolving COVID science may face unjust license suspensions. The ultimate effect of the bill will be to chill public criticism by California doctors of mistaken government public health diktats since few will want to put their licenses in the hands of the very public health officials with whom they disagree over the interpretation of science. Even legitimate dissent from public health orthodoxy by licensed doctors may be excised from the public square as a consequence. Worse, the widespread distrust Americans now have in public health institutions will only deteriorate further. So we can see that as evidence emerges that what we were told with such certainty and confidence in the early days
phase of the pandemic is demonstrably false. Legislation and regulation emanating from the centre from corporate interests and agencies that are meant to regulate them will prohibit legitimate debate, prohibit dissenting voices and grant yet further opportunities to make profit and prevent doctors acting on their consciences in your benefit. But the good news is we beat Big Pharma this year. Can you see how the system cooperates and corroborate one another's lies in order to maintain ongoing systemic abuse? It seems to me that the system is willing to cooperate and corroborate one another's lies, whether it's the FDA, the pharmaceutical industry or government bodies or judicial bodies in order to maintain a profitable situation in which dissent is impossible. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the chat. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these. Remember, turn on the notification bell and subscribe to this channel. It's the only way we can be sure that our vital message reaches you, the people that we make it for. Stay free.